Welcome back. We're going to take a look at running functions inside of our templates. Now, as good practice, you should make an attempt to separate your logic from your templates. But at times, it can be very helpful to run a function inside your template. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example here. And we're just executing a template and we're passing in a variable. And the way that we're getting our function into our template is we're just simply attaching a method to this variable. So as you can see, we have variable p, which is of type price. It's a float64, and we've attached this, to, this method to that data type. So we have can cash uh, price method. So basically, if you're wondering what this does, uh, in Canada, you don't have a one cent uh, coin. So basically, you need to round up to the nearest, you know, five cent or round down to the nearest five cent. But anyway, we have our method attached to, to our variable. And if we go over to our template to run this, you know, we still have our, our double curly braces on both sides. We're going to access this just like we would access a field on a struct. It's just dot can cash uh, price you know, method. And notice that you don't have to put parentheses behind it to invoke it. You can just put it, put it just like this and this will run. It's going to return our string and that will replace this section right here. So let's go ahead and run that. Our price is $3.94. There we go. And it rounded up. So we passed in, passed in our variable, which has a method attached to it. And then we simply just ran it by accessing it with dot uh, can cash price. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and change our price to, let's say $3.91, see if it rounds down this time. There we go, $3.90. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next ex example. All right, in this example, we're going to be using the template.funcmap uh, data type, and we're going to be uh, attaching our own function. So as you know, a map is just simply you know keys and values. And here we have another key and another value. And this is going to allow it to access these functions by using these keys. So if we go over to our, our template, we have can cash price as we have right here. And we've created another one upper and that's how we access it there as well. So these work the same way as the other functions, the built-in functions. So we call our function and then we have a space and then our variable we had multiple variables, it would just be spaces in between each variable. Uh, same thing with this one. We get, remember we get this name because we set the name of it in the map. So we give it upper, and this one we're just passing in a string literal. But anyway, so we're attaching, uh, we're saving our functions in this func map, which is a data type in the template uh, package and then we can simply just call that. Now one thing to be aware of is that you have to use this funks uh, method before you parse. So 
template.new is just going to create a new template. Let's take a look at that. So template.new, like we said, just returns a new template. And then we're going to run funks on that template that we've returned. And we have to pass in our funk map. So let's take a look at that as well. So like we said, uh, we're running funks. Um, like it says, must be called before the template is parsed. And it's just adding elements of the argument map to the template's function map. So anyway, we're adding our, our functions, the, the keys and the values, the name of, you know, to that function map. And of course it takes a function map, which is just, you know, simply, like we said, you have the string for your key and the interface. Well, that's just our function that we're passing in. I think that's pretty good. So from the template package, we're running new. We're creating a new template. We're, part, we're going to go ahead and name that template index.html. Uh, we're going to be running the funks uh, method on that. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in our func map, our template.func map, which we've went ahead and we've created two different keys. This key has this function, and then of course our pass root are commonly in between, and then this key points to this function. Now this, this is the same function we were using before we created this one. Now this one here is actually from the strings package, and this is just the two upper functions. This is gonna capitalize everything there. So, one reason you might want to use a func map is if, say, you have a whole bunch of functions you would like to use. Maybe you like to capitalize a whole bunch of stuff or, you know, to uncapitalize a bunch of stuff. If you're going to grab a whole bunch of functions, especially built-in ones, this could actually make it a lot quicker and easier than, say, trying to make all your own methods for every single thing you wanted to use. But anyway, we're parsing everything and we're still returning a pointer to a template.template. .template or a template inside the template package. So anyway, let's go ahead and run this. And by the way, I'm also printing off uh, the template tree. Let's take... And template, as you can see, well, it's just a struct and it has this tree. It has a name, a parse name, and a root. And you could keep digging down into these um, as much as you want. But anyway, I'm just printing that off so you can take a look at it. And like we said, we'll be running two different functions. So this one should return our price rounded up or down to the nearest five cents. And this one should be capitalizing this entire piece of text. All right, there we go. So it rounded to $3.30 and it capitalized our text. So it ran both of these functions. And of course, if we wanted to change, change let's change that to say a three, There we go, rounds up to $3.35. And like I said, we went ahead and printed off uh, our template uh, tree. And just like it was saying, you know, it has a name, has a parse name, you know, it has the root of our tree, and it has all the different things that we said it would have in it. But anyway, so, in summary, if you wanted to make a bunch of your own functions, or if you wanted to reuse a whole bunch of functions, the func map, func map might be a really good solution for you. Uh, one thing to be aware of is that this 
I'm keeping this outside the main function so that way it's still visible here inside our index handler. So when it looks outside of this function for TPL, it can find it you know, in the next scope. But anyway, especially if you're going to be using, say, a bunch of functions from different packages, you could, it'd be a lot easier to bring that in. Now just make sure that it's returning something eligible so that way, you know, that way the function can run. But I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.